Ignorant Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm your host, the Bear, Chris Felica. Alongside, once again, Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, Will Hill will join us for the Gambling Group Chat. Uh, the regular season is over. We have bowl games this weekend. Um, I'm sure we, we will all be wagering very irresponsibly as the excitement of just seeing college football back on our television will uh, will overtake us with the emotion, enthusiasm, <laughs> And reckless handicapping and betting, Jeff. Enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Is that the Harbaugh has said that before? An enthusiasm unknown to mankind to wager on these games. Who's got it better than us? Who's got it better than us? Wagering on on bowl games. Eleven a.m. Saturday, Saturday morning, first bowl game. I mean, Bear, how do you keep track of any of of what's happening? So, portal, opt outs, portal. By the way, and players still playing the bowl game. Coaching changes, yep. not at the, the top, by the way. How many of these teams are we going to talk about the next couple of weeks that are missing a coordinator, missing a position coach? Um, and then you have Hard. the coaches focused on port on their own portal, right, of, mm-hmm. of players trying to get into their portal. Like This weekend, teams are hosting players on yep. visits. Next Wednesday is National Signing Day. So you have all these things around the bowl games, and it's like, oh, what's the motivation? Yep. What's the roster like? And so bowl season now, look, I'll watch the games. We'll wager oh, so on you. Sure. you well, yeah. Good luck on your surgery. Thank having you. surgery tomorrow. Thank for those listening to the college podcast on Thursday, you will be up all all weekend. Oh, I'm going to be. I am going to be. I'm going to be, there, I'm, be, I'm be sitting there, wager. drugged up, live unable wagering. to sleep. Right hand will be going. Phone, will, iPad will. Uh, it, Just it's, live it, wagering your butt I'm off very, all I'm weekend. Very, I am very scared at how many accidental zeros I'm going to put on. Uh, on some way, Gamble this group chat will be hot with this bear with with Loopy Bear tweet. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Loopy Bear uh, talking about these games. So you, you, you're right, though. I, I want to say one thing before in, in, about the balls, and I was kind of like joking before a better yeah. spot. Like the people who are like, "Oh, there are too many bowl games. Who cares?" So don't watch. Never too much. It, it's like it's like people who like put out pics on, on social media, or whatever. Like don't. Don't shame don't them. Don't shame them. Like, if you want to bet them, bet them. If you don't, don't. If you want to bet opposite, fine. Like, me, me, my college football season hasn't been good. You, you want to bet them, fine. You want to fade me, fine. Like, people, Keep putting are just out your do, picks. people are doing it. Just let them do their Even thing. Even if you're bad. Just people people them. do their thing and, 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 and react. But, like, with these bowl games, don't, like, oh, I hate them. There are too many. We don't need them. It's a football game. You want to watch it? Watch it. If you don't. Don't don't be don't be angry, old man, about that. I'm looking forward to quad boxing, like two bowl games and an NFL game on Saturday yeah. night. Just living, Saturday NFL night. Just just, just, Saturday living, just living the dream. Um, we're living the dream with some wagers that you have. Yeah, for I got two. Some of these games have two. It's more Not than that. zero though, so yeah. we'll take these again. These are uh, as we talk about every week. These are games that Bears actually wager on. We're gonna start with the Independence Bowl. It is Cal. Against Texas Tech. Texas Tech is a three point favorite. Cal is six and six. They won their final three games to become bowl eligible. They're six and six against the spread. And Wilcox, their head coach, has been great as an underdog against out of conference opponents in his career. Cal Tech, six and six overall, five and seven against the spread in the Big 12 this season. Where are we going here, Bear? I like Cal plus the three. Yeah. Um, Texas Tech did not finish the season off in a very good manner. So I, I don't know. Coming off a 50 point loss to to Texas, yeah, like, are they really gonna care about about this game? You look at the way Cal ran the ball uh, throughout the course of the year with Ott, and yeah. the fact that Texas Tech allowed 207, 238, 300, 272 this year on the ground. I know Tech's got a decent running game as well. Um, I don't know. Cal's got changes on the coaching yeah. staff, as we as we, we mentioned as well. I, I don't know. I still like Texas Tech has had kind of a disappointing season. Like people thought. They were kind of a sleeper in the league, maybe yeah. make some noise, and whether for whatever reason, injuries, blown leads, whatever, it didn't really work out. I know the Pac-12 has struggled in bowl games. Uh, if you go back over the last 13 bowl games, but Pac-12 is three and ten. By the way, here's a little, little trivia for you. It's not Aflac. We're not sponsored by Aflac yeah. yet. What last team in California from the state of California to win a bowl game? Is it like Stanford beating Iowa or something like 2019 that? 2019 Cal. <laughs> like, like the last three, the last three um, Pac-12 bowl wins were all picks of PNW teams: Oregon, Oregon State, Washington. Yeah. Arizona State won a bowl game, and then Cal won one in 2019. So wow. not Stanford, great. Cal, yeah, yeah, not 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 great. not great, Bob. 
Their I like o- the Bears this week. Their OC moved on, but they, they promoted their offensive line coach, who was the OC at North Texas for a couple. Yeah, and he's years, a running so. running game coordinator. Yeah, so like, so, so it's, it's not. not that big of a loss. Um, the props are not up yet, but Taj Brooks, Texas A and M, uh, excuse me, Texas Tech's running back, is nearly fifteen hundred yards this season. I think he rushes for a ton of yards this game. So if you're looking for another wager to make in this game, the number is not up mm-hmm. yet, Bear. But Cal's allowed a lot of rushing yards this year to Marshawn Lloyd, to Buck, to Oregon, but they rotate running backs to, 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 to Sione Vaki. So an extra wager in this game, I think, would be taking uh, taking Taj Brooks if you can find the number uh, over uh, for his rushing number in this game. All right, let's get to the second bowl game you like here. It's the Pop-Tart Bowl. It's an, an edible, an edible uh, bowl mascot That's as why. well, right? Uh, it's NC State, Kansas State, Kansas State favored by three here. NC State's nine and three overall, seven to five against the spread. They've won five in a row by at least a touchdown to end of the season. Kansas State eight and four, seven four one against the spread. They went six and three in conference play. What are we doing here, Bear? Well, you always talk about motivation and in, in situations for bowl games and wanting to try and identify the highly motivated teams like NC state fits the bill for me. Yeah. The way they finished the year, um, they've gotten some big landings uh, in in the portal and in recruiting as well. I think Doran like kind of pleaded for some NIL. He got it and they've done well. I think it is a ton of motivation there on momentum uh, for the Wolfpack. On the other hand, you got Kansas state with Will Howard. He's in the portal. They lost a bunch of other guys. OC left. Oh, Oh yeah. Like it's not a, look, Five game winning streak for the Wolfpack, uh, the, the the signing day momentum, and the other thing like last couple of years, NC State hasn't had really an opportunity to pick up that like they are, they're like seeking that ten win season for the first time in a long time. They had the one bowl game canceled that one year because of it. This is an opportunity to win ten games. Like I think that Dave Duran has his team hell bent on a win. I think they will win. Uh, the three point dog. You look at every yeah. ACC underdog cover last year, so it's not it's just. I'm just a throwaway line there just to follow it away. But I, I think this spot for NC State is a small dog. I, I, I talked about playing the under the single digit dogs on the money line. I'll take the NC State Wolfpack plus three. I'll take the NC State Wolfpack on the money line. My bigger question for you, yeah. though, what is your favorite player for favorite pop top? Um, I haven't had a whole oh, in a while. Um, s'mores probably. I mean, the old fashioned, old the, the basic yeah. s'mores one is pretty good. I haven't had my kids are not Pop Tart kids. They don't have Pop Tarts very Sorry often. To hear that. So I have. I mean, I don't know. I haven't had Pop Tarts since I was probably a kid. I mean, my kids again. They they like the s'mores ones. They like the frosted ones as well, like the little the, the birthday oh, cake the little, little ones. Little. Um, but yeah, they're not. They don't like the brown sugar cinnamon ones. Really? Okay. So yeah, that's, that's, that's number okay. three for me. Okay. I do like the brown, the frosted brown sugar cinnamon. I mean, because I see, I like I like maple and brown sugar, like oatmeal and stuff. That's so why I like that. Number two is the frosted blueberry, okay, which is very good. But not number like number one by like a wide bar. I'm talking like unanimous every yeah. AP first place yeah. vote in the best. Yeah. Frosted strawberry is by far the best. I, I, like I, like frosted like that yeah. is like I. I, I I have. I, it's been a little while since I had one. Yeah. Like I know we used to have like pop tarts as like kind of like stacks in like the like the the green room for yeah. like meetings and stuff. And like I'd see the the frosted strawberry pop tarts in there, and that would be just run over and get yeah, them. Yeah, so they're and, and and the thing is, I don't even need to put them in the toaster oven. Ooh. Like, like, like no, okay. I, I can I can Ooh. just go right right out right no, out. I gotta, of the I gotta toast them. Usually, what I'll do is I'll do I'll have one right out of the the packet, and I'll put one in the toaster. So Can't you, even wait. So you get the oh yeah, you get the big just frosted strawberry pop tarts are so, so good. Like this, this is a ball game I would want to be a player or a head coach in because I want the pop tart swag bag and I want to be able to take a bite out of the pop tart mascot for winning. Hey, Pop Tarts, slide in the DMs. I'll tell you where the studio's at. You can just put a whole bag of Pop Tarts right here in front of Bear. For, for the, he'll be off of surgery too, so he'll need to eat oh, some Pop Tarts exactly. to feel better about himself. Yep. Right here, just DM me. I'll send you the address. Just oh. Pop Tarts all over the table. I'll send you my home address. Yeah, well, <laughs> but you, can bring, you can get both. We can have yeah, them here. Sure. And I, and I need oh. to see this eat one raw basically yeah. and have one. Yeah, see, I, thought, I thought with your kids you were going with like the little mini bite ones. That they no, the too. kids, I, they don't, you know, they're not against Pop Tarts. But they don't ask for them very often. You can't like, be anti pop tarts. No, they're not anti pop tarts. But like, if we have them, like, let's say we go on like to a beach trip and mm-hmm. someone else brings them, like, they will eat pop tarts for a week. But then we come home, they don't ask for pop tarts again. It's one of those things where like they just sort of have them if they're there, but don't ask for them on the regular. See, that's what we normally do when we go 
when we go to way, away to the beach in, the, in February, like we get the, like breakfast is our meal that we kind of like do easy and like I'll grab like grab pop tarts, go down to the go down to the pool, the beach, or grab a protein. So you're bar. so you're you're in your your Turks and Caicos, mm -hmm. where yep. your favorite place in the world. Yep. You're in your your nice little you know your little Tommy Bahama fishing shirt, got your hat on, your swim trunks. You're just rocking pop tarts as you're walking down to the beach. More, 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 more like Adidas <laughs> or Under Armour t-shirt and. And, and got cargo yeah. bathing suit Buddy, and you ba have to baseball hat, sunglasses, right. bag in the bag. I got my water bottle, pop tarts, and a protein. I might order this for you. The the fishing shirt is the best big guy shirt of all time on See, any I, vacation. I, I actually, I actually, it's unbelievably comfortable. Now is the time that I need one because I'm not going to be able to like lift my arm up to put like a t shirt on. I'm going to need like the open button down. Dude, like, they're so comfortable. Okay. I have like seven of them. It's all I wear during on vacations. And I'm going, I, I go <laughs> tropical vacation too every year after football season. So like, dude, I'm going to get you all some right. of those. So okay. pop tarts and fishing shirts. Just that, set up the studio, it. guys. Um, all right. Let's do the gambling group chat. Bear promise it's only going to be about 10 minutes. Ends up being like 45 as usual. So a uh, lot to talk about here. It's going to be me, Bear, Will Hill, and Sammy P. Here's a gambling group chat for college football. Gambling group chat is back. Myself, Jeff, Will, and Sammy. Uh, bowl season is officially officially upon us now. The games get started on uh, Saturday. I'll, I'll leave a dealer choice here. I, I, we, we, the game starts Saturday a bunch, and then I guess we can cover whatever we might like through next Wednesday. I guess we'll be back next Thursday with, with games throughout the week. So uh, next uh, five, six games uh, of the uh, – to five, six days of the week, we got we had a bunch of games. The only game that really stuck out to me that, that I talked about with Jeff earlier was I did like Cal uh, getting the three uh, against Texas Tech. I know the Bears have a change of coordinator now, which Babs going to uh, to Baylor, but but I think the way the Bears close the, the season, um, I think in the way they can run the ball with Ott and how poor Texas Tech's been against the run, uh, led me to take the Bears plus three. Uh, Will, I guess I'll start with you. Any any thought in that game, or is there something else that you might be uh, attracted to this weekend? I didn't bet that game. If I were going to, I would go head to head against you, but that usually doesn't go too well for me when I when I take you, you head on. But I just, of course you would. I think Texas Tech. Look, I I just I've been on them the second half of the year, and it's sometimes it's gone for me, sometimes it's gone against me. It's just I think they got so injured early in the year. They you know Morton was playing her. They were playing with a third string quarterback, so some of their numbers were watered down. So you know, life on the line. I expect Texas Tech to win the game, but I don't really want to lay three here. I'll just. Uh, I'll mention this now. I don't know if we talked about this last week. So I don't think we got into the bowls. These short lines, especially when you like the favorite, people think, oh, it's not going to land on one or two, two and a half. Those points are extremely valuable. So just take the money line if you like the favorite, because a lot of times what happens, a team down seven late, they score a touchdown, they go for two, and the game either lands on one or lands on two if there's enough time for a field goal on the other end. So keep that in mind that, hey, the one, one and a half, two, that's not going to come into play. Sometimes it does come into play. So uh, just, just something to remember here in bowl games, especially these early bowl games. These teams don't really want to play overtime. They just they make a statement and go for two. So. Uh, it would be Texas Tech money line or nothing for me. Uh, one game I do like, I'll, I'll start with the first game on Saturday. And Saturday is a great day. We get all these bowl games. We get three NFL games. Just an awesome day of football on Saturday. Georgia Southern, uh, they're up to minus three. I just don't know how uh, Ohio is going to score. They were a bad offense to begin with. They're missing their quarterback. They're missing all sorts of guys. We have one data point for Georgia Southern playing a MAC team. They beat Ball State forty to three. So uh, I know Georgia State, Georgia Southern is not any good on defense, but I do think they win this game. And you know, I just don't see Ohio scoring a lot of points. Maybe an Ohio team total under, maybe a game under. Uh, I think Georgia Southern gets it done here. Sam, you had any any uh, golden nuggets there about uh, making making sure we take the money? That's a great point, actually, because I can remember a, a bunch of games in the past where there might have been a a Georgia Southern bowl game actually a couple of years ago. Uh, where that happened, I mean, maybe, maybe it was against Eastern Michigan, where I think it came down to like like a two point conversion late, and they went for it for the for the win just to get the the heck out of there and avoid avoid overtime. So, very very astute point, Sam. You got anything uh, as intelligent as that for us? I actually took the over 48, 48 and a half in Georgia Southern Ohio, and if you look, Circa's got forty nine, Superbook's got fifty. So somebody smarter than me whacked those there. Uh, you could still get 48 and a half at a lot of places. I, I mean, I, I don't like Ohio to win the game. I'm not going to call my shot. I, I agree. Georgia Southern clearly has an edge. It's a much better offense. But I, I think Ohio is that type of team that just pulls out these trick plays in this game. You know, the flea flicker, the wide receiver pass. I mean, the Mac always gets really wacky in these bowl games. And oftentimes, guys, you save stuff for games like this. 
Um, when you see the market move up like this in, a, in an Ohio game, it's also pretty telling. So I, I still think over 48 and a half is good. And then I, I can't pass post. We did play UCLA uh, minus three, minus four. That's gone. Basically, Garbers is probably going to play for the Bruins at quarterback. Um, and Boise State's on quarterback three. Uh, Taylor Green transferred to Arkansas. Uh, the second guy is out. The running back is not going to play. Um, yeah, they played good down the stretch, but I, I think UCLA is a lot better. I mean, you guys are Pac-12 guys, especially you, Jeff. UCLA going to bring it in this one? I think they are. That's what I'm worried about. I'm so worried the, about that. I, I think it's a good wager because Boise State, offensively, as you mentioned, won't be able to move the ball. Right now, UCLA lost their defensive coordinator. They uh, uh, Latu is not going to play, which makes sense. They lost, I think, two secondary pieces. But the rest of the defense, I think, will bring it defensively in this game. Um, and as you mentioned, Boise State is not going to have their best offensive weapons in this game. And they weren't a terribly good offense this season in the first place. On defense, they weren't really good either, right? I mean, look, the three-game win streak they have is great. It's a great story. Good for them. Won the Mountain West. Uh, the only problem is Chip Kelly's teams in bowl games, and there's two of them now, Bear, are not very good. Last year, they were up on Pittsburgh. Remember the Sun Bowl? Yep. Lost that game late. I just worry about the motivation factor in the uh, – this is the Gronkowski L.A. Bowl, right? The the big uh, the big Gronk yes, Bowl? Yes, yeah, the Gronk Bowl. Yeah, the Gronk Bowl in Los Angeles. Because I don't know how you do the bowl games, man. Like, I, I start to research these games. I got to look at Portal. Got to look at opt-outs, coaching, motivation. I mean, like, some of these teams – I mentioned the Bruins have X amount of guys out. Boys, Ohio, as you mentioned. Um, Will, they're out – what? Two, two quarterbacks, two running backs, two wide receivers. Some teams have guys that are opting out, or excuse me, portaling, but still playing in the game. And I saw Chip Kelly said, nope, if you're in the portal, you're not playing in the game. I think these games are just so difficult to figure out. Um, the money line's a good play. And I know we talked about this last week, Bear. You had the number, right? If an underdog... Mm -hmm of seven points or less, typically just wins the game outright. See, see, no see, point single even, digit dogs. Yeah, yeah, there's no okay. point even taking them with the points, guys. Just take them straight out to win the game. Um, so I think a lot of these games are just crap shoots, but um, I like to under in that game because I think Bruins can't score either. I think both those teams struggle to, to, to score the ball, but I mean, Boise is not going to score. I mean, they have, they have a Thurston quarterback playing against yeah. a really good defense. Yeah, the, 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 the update to that number, yeah. single digit dogs, it, it's basically 50-50, 49% cover spread but of those scores that cover 78 percent went out right so yeah. you're 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 better off just playing the, the the dog on the money line so yeah maybe we could have like our little like bowl our bowl commandments there between uh will and, and playing money line and then then taking this the the single digit dogs on the uh the money line as well maybe i'll just maybe i'll start that being that i don't have a whole lot of conviction on any of these early games and i'll probably be drugged up post-surgery on saturday <laughs> i'm just gonna start firing oh. on uh on, on random underdogs to win outright. How about that? All the underdogs, just straight up. Yeah, so just play, 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 play all, play all those dogs on, on Ohio, the money line. Their 128th ranked scoring offense, without any of their offensive weapons on the I, I, money line. I, here's the I, I, honestly, this is a this is a good question though. I think for the for the group here in in these ball games though, how much do these stats like regularly really matter? Like these are, I mean, so many. I mean, these games are just glorified exhibitions. Like. It doesn't really matter that you struggled against the run during the. I mean, I I, I, think, I, I in, in, in some of these non in, in some of the games that don't involve power conference teams, like Sammy hit on it too. Like you get a lot of just trick plays and just throwing stuff against the wind. Will going for too late. Like these games are just like basically go out and have fun, aren't they? Sure, but look, look it, Cal had trouble stopping the run this year against <laughs> many running backs, right? Marshawn Lloyd, Bucky Irving, Sione Vaki. Uh, and the way Texas Tech runs the ball with Brooks, it was almost 1,500 yards. Like, I would imagine that matters in this game, right? That, yeah. The Tech can run the ball. They want to run the ball, and Cal doesn't stop the run. You don't magically start stopping the run in the bowl game, but I think the question, and you said, and Sammy, meant, like these are games where trick plays matter, coaching matters, motivation matters, and each and every game, you don't know where that's going to come from. Um, you know, there's an outgoing offensive coordinator just going to call a bunch of trick plays just because he can in the final game yeah. he's at a school. I mean, you don't know mm -hmm. these type of things, but I think it, it does matter if you if you have bad stats all year and then those players on that bad unit are out, you're probably going to be worse. You're not going to be better. You want to play those guys, you know, to be better during the season. I think that, I think that sort of it, it should calculate into how you look at these games. It, it's interesting. If I was I'm Iowa looking at some year? of the uh... Bear, if I was Iowa, Go ahead. right? You play on New Year's Day against Tennessee. Screw it. Four wide. Just just split it yes. up. You know, like, but, 
what do you have to lose? I mean, can you imagine what Tennessee would do too? I, I know it's not going to happen, but if I'm coaching Iowa in this game, put three or four wide receivers and just put them out wide because Tennessee would literally freak the hell out. They would have no idea what to do. I'm not saying it's going to work, but you can try stuff like this in these bowl games. And I, I'm not kidding. If I was at Iowa and maybe there's a reason I'm sitting here and not coaching, but <laughs> everybody expects Iowa to run, 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 punt, run, 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 punt. If they came out with a three receiver set, it would be awesome. The, the only pushback to that is they could have done it in the regular season too. Like to actually win games they had to win. Like against Michigan, wouldn't you want to run the offense that no one expects you to run? Like that, that's my only pushback on the in the bowl game. Like, yeah, Iowa's great that they might they might do that, but a lot of teams could have run these plays during the regular season to help them be better football teams. And, and look, I the thing about bowl preparation, it's it's a weird time. Now, these bowl games, the early games are sort of quicker, obviously, so you have less time to sort of just goof off but you know, the first couple of weeks of bowl practice typically is just the young kids practicing and then you figure out the last 10 days your opponent go forward but these guys have practiced now just exclusively for for their opponent and look guys coaches are off recruiting they're off portaling like, I, how much are they paying attention to the game plan i just think these games are so hard to handicap for those reasons that it makes it hard to ha to be really um, to have strong convictions on a lot of the games now, you're right it's the the portal and the recruiting and the calendar and the timing now so it, it, that that's more important than a bowl game on January. I mean, uh, on December seventeenth or December twenty second. It, it's solidifying your class and who you're who you're dropping the bag NIL cash off for th that you're going to get next year. I I'm looking at some of these money, uh, like the, some of the money splits here, Will. And, and I know you texted me last night a, a couple of games that that you liked, and I and one of them was Jacksonville State, and, and it looks like Jacksonville State's one of the bigger like public concentration games of the bowl season like like right like right now does that does that worry you come bowl season when it looks like there's a, a team where there's one-sided action like jacksonville state would that lead you to not play the game cox or would you want to play ul lafayette like, like does, does that affect your thinking or do you think that okay i'm i'm seeing something other people clearly are seeing the same thing i'm seeing i don't that that, that doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me. I don't think like we always joke about the bartender. I don't think the bartender is the kind of guy who's playing these bowl games, you know, a week, 10 days out. I think it's people <laughs> who are doing their homework. Yeah. They're studying the matchups. It's a little more of an astute better where, you know, the public is going to come in an hour before the game day of the game and say, Oh, who do I like? I'm going to throw some action on it. And these games are, you know, standalone games, Island games. So I think you're getting maybe uh, just, just a more astute better earlier. So it makes me like it even a little more. And I just, I like Jacksonville state. I think, uh, first bowl game, first year at this level, I think this is going to mean more to them. Uh, Louisiana Lafayette feels like they play in this first bowl Saturday every single year. I don't know how much they're going to be in the game. I know they do have some <laughs> home field with this game in, uh, I think it's New Orleans. But Jacksonville State, I mean, I know South Carolina wasn't that good this year, but they they went into South Carolina, who's an SEC school, and they were tied in the fourth quarter. That was anybody's game. So uh, I, I like Jacksonville State here. I think they win this game. It's so funny you bring that up about the timing of the bets because I wasn't going to even tell this story, but it's it's very – timely. Now I was on a bus with about 22 Chicagoans that came to Boston to get on a bus to go to army Navy. And these guys are all deciding what they're going to bet on the bus. And the common theme was, well, we got to <laughs> bet the under, we got to bet the under, it always goes under. And I didn't want to take over the conversation, but I was explaining to them, you know, the line opened 32 or 31 and now it's 27 and a half. And the one guy goes, wait, really? So I had to basically convert the bus <laughs> from full game under to first quarter under, which hit in a sweat, mind you. Uh, they did score the first play of the second quarter, but it was 0-0 after one. But to Will's point, I mean, most people are not betting days before the game or weeks before the game. They are waiting until that like hour or two hour sweet spot. I mean, these guys were ready to make their bets on the way to the game. And they were all going to go under bad numbers, 27 and a half, 28, which ended up being a horrible push uh, for some and a horrible loss for others. But they're not betting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They're betting on Saturday and Sunday. So how many of the 22 guys took your advice? Did they all just go first say, under I'd and they say, just said, screw this guy, we're going? Well, I was with the boys, and I, I actually put – they didn't even know where to find first quarter in the app. 
They didn't even know where to look. <laughs> so I had to, I had to make a couple presses with my own finger. Um, I would say half of the crew, maybe. It was a fun bus after the go. game. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very convincing. I like it. That 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 safety though, at the end of the game, was one of those on social media that was a fun because you could really tell where people wagered, whether they wagered before the game, uh, you know, we did seven days before, six days, the day of the game. Uh, because that that was a quite an ending there to take that safety. It, 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 it was the right call for them to do that, obviously. Yeah, it, it was funny. We we're gonna get into more story time here as well because I I after <clears throat> after Army took the lead and it was seven nothing, and it was apparent after watching Navy like I'm like, they're 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 not scoring. They're they're not scoring at all. And so I, I got involved fairly heavily live on an army money line bet. And uh sitting there and my, we were we 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 were we were supposed to go see Bocelli that night, but he got can't he got sick and he canceled and lost his voice. So we were just kind of doing errands throughout the day, making Christmas cookies and and things. And so we really didn't feel like cooking. So like we we ordered out and I get the dub ready ready for pick up it blah blah blah. So it was right around that time where Navy had the ball back right before the strip fumble return, and I'm intently like putting my shoes on my jacket and looking around the corner, and my, and my wife goes to me. Did you bet on Army Navy? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, why? I go, I bet Army. He's like, she's like, who'd you bet? I go, Army. And then literally two plays later is the strip set. And I go, that's why I bet Army. Now we win. And then I go to pick up the food. And they, by the time yeah. I get to the place, the restaurant, they, they, to get the food, they, they, they scored the one touchdown. And then they get the ball back. I'm just literally sitting in the parking lot of the room waiting for him to bring out the food <laughs> like as they and like on the radio and the radio call on on Sirius is it's all it's the uh it's the navy telecast okay and they're all homers and, and yeah, of then, course and then I, and like when navy's game, i'm like well my god if i have to if i go home and, and an army loses this game I'm, i am gonna be just just up i'm gonna be just berated left and right and uh fortunately they did hold on and win so uh, yeah, but we, we, we all, we I don't know what our, that uh, defense little... army was playing. Well, that defense army was playing, and, and again, if you're listening yeah. to the radio, you didn't see. It, but they were given like 15, 20 yards of cushion. It's like yes. one second they're at the thirty, the next it's like they're inside the ten. It's like Navy. I mean, they probably should have thrown it more. Sammy talked about Iowa spreading out and going four wide. Navy maybe could have done it because Army looked helpless uh, against the pass and bear. It's so funny you mentioned listening to the team you bet against their radio announcers. I won't do that for any sport. Baseball, you know how you can watch <laughs> if you have the package. You know the, the home team or the away team. Yeah. I will not. I will not be on the same station as, as the vision. I just it, it, it gives me bad vibes. You know, it feels like they're rooting against you. It's just a, it's a bad experience. My thought watching the end of that game was what you said. Will was why didn't Navy throw the ball the entire game? Because Army was just they they were letting them get 15 yard chunk plays over and over and over again. I'm sitting in a hotel room. You know, I was in New York with my family on my phone, like hoping the undercash is watching Navy get 15. I, I was in awe of, of Army's prevent to win the game defense. And luckily, they stopped them on the tush push. The, the, the first time all year, tush push has been stopped in the Northeast. It, it, it's amazing. I, I'm looking at some of these other games too, but I'm sure people, story time with Army Navy is uh, re really generating listenership right now. I see uh, UCLA has clicked up to five against Boise State now at Circa. So maybe PBP, maybe people are listening in here and uh they're moving they're moving the line right now. <laughs> Following Sammy's uh early play there. So the Bruins up to five at Circa now at 49. Interesting. I did think about playing New Mexico State. It does feel like again handicapping motivation and just going to Auburn winning uh, and then in in the game for a good bit against Liberty in that conference championship game, uh, Fresno State, Tedford gone, clearly not the same team. Games in New Mexico, not it's not in Las Cruces, it's in Albuquerque. So I would imagine most of the fans there will be New Mexico State fans. It's a pretty solid three and a half. Uh, Sammy, you have any thoughts on New Mexico State, Fresno State, or, or is that just a total? Not total make pass? a single bet there. Got nothing for you there. I'm gonna punt. Got nothing. Perfect. 
punt, punt, punt it over to the uh, punt it over to the other team, and we'll see if Will's got something for us on that. No Ted for for Fresno State, so I agree. There's a, a major motivation edge for New Mexico State playing close to home. It will mean something to get. What are they sitting at nine nine wins to get to ten or ten to get to eleven? I think it's I think it's ten to get to eleven. So hey, if you're New Mexico State to get to eleven wins, all right, that that's significant. But do you want to lay three and a half? Uh, Fresno State didn't play well the second half of the season. I'd probably play New Mexico State. I just that that hook scares me. So it, it'd probably be New Mexico State or nothing just for the motivation. And Tedford, I don't know, you know, wh- where Fresno's he- heads at with their coach being out. And um, I don't know, is this is this temporary for Tedford? Is this just like a one game thing, or is he st- is, is he retiring? I, I didn't read too much into that. Uh, okay, they they have not announced his future plans, but it, this is like the second or third yeah. time he stepped away for health reasons. Yeah, I feel like at this right. point, it, you know, like let's move it along call Ryan Grubb and come down and, you know, and, and coach at Fresno maybe. But, like, I, I just – I don't know. Look, the, the motivation part of this game, obviously, with New Mexico State playing it at home, essentially, um, there's talk about, obviously, their fans taking that place over. And, I mean, Fresno, look, do they, they want to play in this game. They want to play a bowl game in Albuquerque. Probably probably not. probably not. So this is one of those, like, do you take the money line? I think it's minus 185, Will. I mean, they talked about money line earlier. Is there a price that's too much on some of these games for you to lay? Or you, you're, you're good laying up to – X amount that's, on some of these bowl games. That's probably at 185. It just doesn't uh, like I here's the thing. You can live bet these games, and you know, it's it, sometimes it's bad content to be like, oh, I'll just live bet it because you're not really helping people win. But if you let's just say New Mexico State starts with the ball and they punt, you'll probably get like minus 120, minus 130 on the money line. So you can wait a little bit. I, I 185 is too rich for my blood, three and a half is too rich for my blood. If I if you just if you're one of these pools, which I know a lot of people are, and you had to do picks against the spread, I would lay the three and a half, but Here's the thing. There's so many bowl games on the, you know, weekdays, afternoons, you're going to go broke betting all these games. You don't have to bet all of them. Now, if you're betting a few bucks a game, whatever, but um, just, I, I think it's important to just stay in control and just pick your spots. You don't have to swing at every pitch here and bet every game. But if I had to bet it, I, I would lay the three and a half. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I've, I've learned or, or got better at throughout the years is just not firing on all of these games. Like, like during the regular season, like, like, like if Jacksonville State and ULF yet were playing, like, like, are you really gonna be have a strong conviction on that game to be able to bet it? I certainly like the, the, the game, games like that. Like it's just hard for me to fully get behind them. But I'm sure people are gonna love. Pe- I would love to see the handle on that game compared to. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe a, a typical uh, Sun Belt game or, or whatever else because it's the first bowl game people are just going to want to bet it and uh and you got will hills pick there jacksonville state uh minus the uh the two and a half now uh against ul lafayette to, to to enjoy yourself with there are a couple of other games this weekend um we've got the fcs playoffs and we got the celebration bowl celebration bowl howard and fam u fam u six and a half over howard I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. I know, uh, Sam, you actually had a, had, a, had a really good year and a deserving favorite there. But two FCS games Friday night. Got uh, Albany, South Dakota State, the uh, defending champs, the Jackrabbits are, well, you, you, you're offshore, you can get 20 at Bookmaker, 20 and a half at Bet Online. 20, I'm just getting, if you got access to these books, I, I are, you, are you acting like all anybody ever does is just bet on? DraftKings and FanDuel and I live in a state with no legal sports wager. There you go. I, I, I am. This and is you're familiar alley. with those. Yeah. So, so we go. We got the Jacks laying anywhere between twenty and twenty-one, and then the other game is a lot all over the board as well. North Dakota State uh, blew out South Dakota last week. They go to Montana, and this game ranges anywhere from Montana minus one at John Murray in the Superbook, Jay Cornegay's location there in the desert, to. Uh, North Dakota State minus one at uh, at DraftKings and other places. So depending on who you like in that game, Sammy, you can either uh, you can lay the one with the uh, the Grizz if you like North Dakota State and the Bison, or you can uh, you can grab one with the Grizz uh, somewhere else if you like them. You got any thoughts on this one, Sammy? Three zero eight nine two four Montana bet plus one bet pick might bet some more. So let me tell you, the, uh, let me read you the text rather I got on Monday. Coach leaving totally deflated the locker room and a lot of the players on their way out looking for D1 offers or NIL money, not beating Montana this weekend. Now, again, that's not the Bible, but when you get a text like that on Monday, you're like mining the situation all week. And I've been trying to figure out like, is this stuff legit? 
The background is the coach is leaving for USC. He's going to be the defensive coordinator, I believe. And usually that stuff happens after the season. But they win to go to the semifinals and the news comes out. And now you're trying to handicap, like, do these kids at North Dakota State care? I don't have that answer, but I will tell you this. Number one, this is not the North Dakota State team of old. This is not a number one or number two seed. In fact, it's far from that. You also have the game in Montana. And I have Montana on a neutral, two points better. Well, this game is at Grizzly Stadium. And Montana's minus one or plus one. So I think all of those factors roll together. Have me on Montana here. I, I, I think it is a weird spot, though. I mean, to have a coach out the door, but coaching in the semis, to me, is super weird. And look, North Dakota State could win. I just feel like seven out of ten times, Montana's going to win this game. So to me, it's a play. I think the, the, the deflating part about it is that he's not leaving for a head coaching job. Like, like if he were, if the coach was leaving to go be the head coach somewhere, you, I think players would be like, great. That's awesome. Like, congratulations, coach. We'll try to win one for you. But he's going to be the, I, I think the official title is, um, is assistant head coach for defense and linebacker coach. So like, it's not, it's a step t- technically in their mind, it's a step down. He's going down, even though, it's not. even though it's not obviously. He's getting paid more money. And USC had to do this now because next week is signing day. The portal obviously is big. So I understand the players being deflated from their the, – in their mindset, the coach is going down. He's going from head coach to linebacker coach at USC. So I, I, I understand totally the players feeling that their coach is not in this with them for, for this game. And look, he's talking about, about preparation. I don't know how much the coach is part of the play calling at North Dakota State right now. But this entire week, I promise you, he spent more hours than ever before in any season he's had recruiting for USC. Like, he spent this week doing USC things, along with, obviously, his coaching duties at, at North Dakota State. But he's just not as focused this week because he's doing USC things as well. Yeah, I, I, I would I would fully agree. I, I think to answer Sammy's question or just follow up him, I, I do think the players obviously – want to potentially try and win a national championship. I, I don't think there'll be a, oh, no, of course. a motive, but, 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 but I do think it's one of those things where if it starts to go poorly, Montana gets up maybe 10, 10, 13, 14 points. If they do get up early, it's like, all right, what, what do we kind of in the coaching staff? Kind of, so I, I do agree. It would be uh it would be Montana or pass for me in, in, in that game uh, as well. Any, are there any games not being played this week that you guys may have, bought a line already just to lock in a price and kind of anticipating a move. We did that last week. We talked about West Virginia uh, and that, and that line move. And that's clearly has run up to five and a half now with, with all the air announcements. Is there anything else going on uh, pre new year's day that you guys have uh, played something right now to uh, in anticipation of a move? Uh, Sammy, I'll start with you. This Missouri side is very, very sharp. And and obviously that goes without being said. Ohio State opens like five, six, and now Missouri's two, two and a half. And I think it's funny because I, I had texted somebody last week who's a very good better. And I said, you know, I kind of like Ohio State at three if it gets there, just to feel the room. And his response mm-hmm. was, there are better games on the board. In other words, don't do it, you moron. <laughs> um, but really, fundamentally, Ohio State's, Second guys are probably good enough to start at Missouri, but I mean, we're, we're going to get to the 29th and you're going to have no McCord, no Harrison, no Henderson, no Stover. A lot of defensive guys are opting out and Missouri, I don't think has a single guy not playing in this game. You know, I'm being a little facetious, but even at minus two and a half, I, I understand the fundamentals of, you know, on an NFL Sunday, I'm never going to lay two and a half when I could have taken five. But in a bowl game, it's you sort of throw the rules out the window. Does that make sense, mm-hmm. Will? Am I am I off point there? Or I mean, even at even at two and a half, three, wise guys still don't want to take Ohio State. And to me, that's pretty telling. Yeah, I think it's a good point because the five or the six, it's not really relevant because that was a different team for Ohio State being priced at five or six. This is the second, third string. So this is a, a whole new line because it's a whole new team. So it makes sense. So um, I don't know where this game is. I think it's the 21st or 22nd. I, 
South Florida getting three against Syracuse is one I like. South Florida rookie coach or first year head coach. Haven't been to a bowl in five years. I think 2018 was the last one. Syracuse moved on from their coach. So you're getting three in that one. I think that closes two, two and a half. You're already starting to see some places move off the three. I think you missed the three and a half. But to me, that's a toss up game. And an, another old Big East rematch. We talked last week about Miami Rutgers and those of us that are old enough to remember all these teams in the Big East. But <laughs> to me, South Florida, if you're getting a field goal there, I think that's a good spot for them. Yeah, no, no Garrett Schrader, I believe, for, for Syracuse either. I think he's out. So that, that probably strengthens your. USF argument as well. Uh, we do have, do you have well, I, well, Will, you mentioned this last week, and it's worth pointing out, I think, again, as Northwestern was plus seven last week. Now they're plus six and a half. I think this, I think Northwestern just wins this game outright. I mean, go look at the roster of Utah right now, guys. They were hurt already, and then they have opt outs and more guys hurt. Like their, their motivation for this game um, is none for Utah. It's not the year that they had, they wanted to have. And Sione Vaki's out for this game. I think Ellis is not playing for this game. Bryson Barnes is going to play, but he's also opting out. Like he's, I mean, he's transferring after the game. Their four string quarterback transferring, not playing. I'm looking at the list right now. They have three or four other transfers, a bunch of wide receivers who or they're not good at wide receiver are transferring out. And Northwestern has like everyone playing. Like, so I, I, I think for me, I think Northwestern just wins this game outright. I, I know Will, I think you said that you took plus seven last week. I, plus six and a half is still fine with me, but I don't think they win this game out right there. I think that's one of the, one that of the other tweet. things. And in... Brad Powers right. tweeted well, that Utah's Sam got rather. 14 guys opting out, 14 guys at Utah. <laughs> now, that's that's a lot. Um, and this stuff is all available. He's been tracking this stuff. He's a good follow for bowl season, yep. Brad Powers. Yep, 14 guys at Utah have opted out, only to be outdone by Coastal Carolina with 19, Texas A&M with 18, North Carolina, NC State with 17, Kansas State and Ohio State with 15 players. That's a lot of players to opt out. Now, we don't know how many of them are starters. I mean, it's there's a lot of guys on a college football team, but to Jeff's point, Utah's got 14 guys opting out, and guys usually don't leave Utah. Guys usually stay for that coach in that system, but that is an alarming number to see 14 opt-outs at Utah. I can't remember if it was Brad that tweeted it out or if it was someone else. So I apologize for not attributing it to if it wasn't Brad, but someone was talking about betting on teams and bowl games that were terrible the, the, the year before. I don't know if they would say like, it was like teams that won four games or fewer the year before a, a team like Northwestern fits is a perfect yeah. example that were terrible last year, this year, get to a bowl again, it falls into the, we are excited to play a bowl game. So like, like I can't remember who exactly it was, but it was something about like teams that won like four games or fewer the previous year, kind of having that turnaround. So that's, that's something else maybe to uh, potentially. I, I will say from personal experience, when you get blown out in a bowl game the year before, the next year you do play harder. We we lost the Vegas Bowl in 06 to BYU. Yeah, it was, was like, by, it was by it was Ole like Miss. Third, it was like 38 to eight in that bowl game in Vegas. And it was atrocious. It was a terrible, terrible end to a season. And the next year we played the Sun Bowl. We had a fifth string quarterback. Like we won that game 56 to 14, I think. Like we wanted to win that game. Like we prepared that week. Like, guys, remember what happened last season? We got blown out. Let's not embarrass ourselves. A lot of us were seniors in that game. Like our final game, let's not, you know, we're, we're not gonna go out in El Paso and we're not gonna be not we're going to focus on winning and we kick south florida's butt like i think that that does that matter a little bit you. but again i don't know how you handicap that for every single team that got blown out last season like you know like is ucla going to play harder this year because they lost to to pit in the fourth quarter last year i i, I don't probably know not probably not but you know, sammy i got great news for you uh someone from our production team just reached out yeah and they have sent me the 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 tweet and the link that the Iowa offensive coordinator job is now open for public application. Yes. So if you if you if you need assistance there, if you want to apply to be Iowa's offensive coordinator, replace Brian Ferentz, I'm sure it couldn't go any worse than it did this year. That. Should I apply for that just for fun and see what happens? Yes, you should. We all should. How good would I, that I, be? I haven't done a, I've never had a resume before. I don't even know where to begin. I did, <laughs> did just submit my name and see what happens. Like imagine, imagine if they like, if it actually worked, like, what? like, Oh, my wife would not be happy, but I need a lot of money. Though. Iowa city's nice. 
I would apply, say how do I apply for I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. I want to apply for this job. You should look. I didn't All play right, football. Speaking... Look at me. I didn't call plays, but it, I feel like still I could call a better offense than Brian Ferentz. And that's not even I'm not even being hyperbolic. I mean, I've watched 10,000 football games in my life. I can I feel like I could figure something out. I, I would think probably there's a good number of people who only have played Madden in their life and probably can call a better play. But that's what made me, I, I sent that tweet out before the, the Big Ten Championship game. I'm like, I'm like, the, Brian Ferrer should just come out like double bird, just ZFG and tr four wide receivers, shotgun every play, and, and just completely surprise Michigan. And of course he didn't do it. And then like the comments were, of course, the, uh, does Iowa have four wide receivers on the roster? And just the usual stuff. But yeah, it was so disappointing mm -hmm. to see them not take that game uh, as uh, unseriously as they should have. We do have an NFL game tonight. Uh, we do? Do we, we have to talk about this game? <laughs> do, we, do, we, do, we, do we actually have an NFL game? <laughs> they're, 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 warming, they're warming up uh, they're, they're warming up Allegiant Stadium there in Vegas for, uh, for, 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 for the bowl season. Easton Stick versus Aiden O'Connell. Exactly. What a game, guys. Boise, 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 uh, uh, North Dakota State and uh, and Purdue. How about that? Once, no, they played Iowa, North Dakota State. I have zero. I have zero thoughts on this game. I have zero. I, I can't imagine wagering on this contest tonight. This is one of those games where you guys will joke with me, but I will go to bed at halftime and be totally fine with it. I like the under 34 and a half. I know these primetime overs have made a little comeback here. I think it's six out of seven. So sometimes it's good to zag when, you know, when the unders are killing, maybe you go to the overs. Now when the overs are doing well, maybe go back to the unders and just look the Raiders. I watched a lot of that game a lot more than I want to admit against the Vikings last week. I'm sorry. Nobody scored till a few minutes left. Nobody even got into the red zone uh, the entire game. Uh, so now you're going to ask these teams to get, you know, 35 plus points. Who knows if O'Connell, it sounds like he's on a short lease. So it might be Hoyer. They owe Garoppolo a bunch of money if he plays and gets hurt. So I don't think we'll see Garoppolo. So if it's Hoyer versus Easton stick, isn't this like 16, 13, 13, then uh, I'm surprised the over took money because it was 33, 33 and a half. Um, I'm okay. Look, I'll bet the under I'm okay. If you beat me in, in, in this type of game. So under 34 and a half to play for me. I would rather go to the dentist clean the gutters, scrub the toilets. I would rather do so many things than bet this game. I have no interest. <laughs> Can, the, the energy tonight in the broadcast is going to be, it's going to be in, very enthusiastic, isn't it? No, it, no it'll, it'll, it'll be okay with Alan Kirk in Vegas. I'm sure they had some fun and I'm sure Kirk hit the blackjack tables and they had some good me and I, they'll, 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 they'll be into this tonight. I think Al will be into it. Al got bumped from a playoff game too. Al got bumped by NBC, so maybe you see a little resurgence from Al. Al, Al, Al might come with his A game tonight. I, I, I'm curious about this. I just, just I, I just want to see like what complete brain fart the Chargers will have during this game, and and you, and you will just be see, sitting there completely just jaw wide open, like what the hell just happened kind of deal. I, I, that's, I mean, it's I'm, I'm some, looking forward to some it. dumb fourth down decision again, right? It has to be something stupid. Some only have like, do the Chargers just leave like Staley in Vegas? Do you just leave him there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, you know, we only have like four more games of this. So it's like, it's like we need to, we need to treasure these few more valuable weeks of, of the Brendan Staley era in, in LA that, that we have, but that would, there'd, there'd be worse places to be left. That's for sure. You could leave me sure. in Vegas. I'm fine with that. Might end up being a good good yeah, thing think, for the think, Chargers too. You get a top five or seven pick. You get maybe somebody like Bowers. You put Herbert with Bowers, and maybe you get a new coach. Who knows? It'd be good for the league if you get Herbert some help there. I know. Look, maybe maybe more of it's on him than we want, want to let on, and you know maybe we overrate him a little bit. But he's still a good player. You'd like to see him get some help there. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, it's funny. I, I went on with uh, Jason McIntyre, who was host, hosting the uh, the Herb yesterday, and. He kind of talked about it, and he asked, asked why, where I thought Jim Harbaugh would be next year, and, and I, I said I would not surprise me at all if uh, Jim Harbaugh were the coach of the Chargers. So who gets the uh, Michigan year. job then? I don't know. But the, the thing is, if you listen, <laughs> 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 I, I mean, immediate uh, skipping right over the Iowa offensive coordinator job and going. No, right he's going to come out with his four wide in Iowa. He's going to he's going to light up Tennessee. Then he's going to get the Michigan job, which would mean more air time for for me one, and you guys too, which is good for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's funny because if you listen to Bruce Feldman's report, like yeah. 
he, Harbaugh is going to get suspended next year. Yes. For, for, and so, like, he's not going to come back and, like, sit out eight games. They're losing, what, how many guys in the NFL? And, 20 yeah. guys in the NFL? Like, like, and all the Michigan fans are like, oh, we hear about this every year. Harbaugh is going to go in and he's back every – this is a little different this year. So, I – I, I I think it makes too much sense. He coached in San Diego. He coached at Stanford. Coached at Fort Niners. Like it makes too much sense for him to, to to not consider that. And then people, of course, brought up the will 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 the ownership pay him what he's going to want and be able to be like second fiddle ego wise in that organization. So who the heck knows? But all I know is we're going to enjoy that game tonight. Uh, sitting there, Jeff will be Jeff will be asleep. We'll Dead be asleep. we'll we'll be, we'll be texting, and all of a sudden there'll be. No responses from Jeff, and I'll be like, <laughs> "Okay, he's out, he's done." And then it's like, literally, what was it? Two Mon- Tuesday, it? Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning. Wake, wait, I wake up at like <laughs> seven, and there's a text like from an hour ago. Did not expect to wake up and see those results. I'm like, <laughs> like he, he, early, my, my man's in riser. bed like at nine o'clock, and he's up at like five. So early riser, unbelievable. Young kids, man, we got school. Got to be up. Got to okay. get him to school. I don't, I don't got to worry about that. All right, guys. Uh, that's enough story time for this week. We'll uh, we'll be back next week. Hopefully, some uh, some more plays as these balls get a little bit more hardcore, and uh, maybe some more actionable games. So, have a great week, guys. We'll talk soon. Back from the gamma group chat. Lots of fun things there for bowl season. It's it's just hard. Bowl season can be difficult. I like the advice that you gave with the underdogs. What Will gave with with the money lines. It's sort of just the way you have to to wager in bowl season. Before we get to our best bets here, let's recap what Bears already put down in the show. Independence Bowl, Cal Plus 3, Pop-Tarts Bowl, pending sponsor for the podcast, obviously, (laughs) NC State uh, Plus 3. Let's get to our best bets for the week. Bear is bowing out. He's being a coward I because have, I know. I don't, there's not a lot I for gave, bowl season. I gave you two bets that are that are there ahead of time. I and I, I I'm gonna man up. You know, you, you know what? Up. You know, you know what? You're 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 shaming me now. We talked about not shaming people early in the earlier in the show about about for picks. No, we up. want ba- we want wagers. But 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 you're 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 you're, you're shaming me. And now, because of that, I am going to make NC State my best bet. All right, you got that, everybody. In the, I know we don't have a fancy graphic right now. Okay, best bet, NC best State. bet, NC there State go. plus three. Good. There we go. There we go. I'm glad I shamed you into that. My best bet is not being shamed because I was prepared for the show today. I have Boise State UCLA under 48 and a half in the Gronkowski LA Bowl. LA Bowl presented by Gronkowski. Ah, One of those two guys. Um, It's a spike and then Gronk just like just just like he's angry, just rips his shirt off and everyone screams in 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 front of. I mean, how many fans are gonna be SoFi Stadium for this game? (laughs) Like it's a Saturday, you see it's a Saturday game. I mean, besides you friends and family for UCLA, what? 75, 100 Bruin fans mm. are going to be there. Mm. Um, here's the deal, guys. Boise State, was their quarterback transferred. Backup quarterback's hurt. Third-string quarterback. Their running back, who did come back, really good. I don't think he's playing this game. UCLA side, Dante Moore transfer out. Garber's the better quarterback he's played. But they've scored seven points, the Bruins have, in two of their last three games. They transferred running back, transferred wide receiver, Defensively, they're mostly whole. Their best players tra- is opted out, but defense was really good this season. Boise State, great story. One three, you know, their the, the last three games. But I bear this game is going to be just a boring, empty SoFi <laughs> Stadium with two offenses that can't move the football. Um, I'm and UCLA has a propensity to just like run the clock out in games. Like Chip Kelly just runs the yeah. ball, gets it over with. So that, under 48 and a half here. It, it, the, the, I, 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 I like that play here. It feels like it could be a very ho-hum kind of, let's just get out of here. It's a giant thing. stadium to have a bowl game with a thousand yeah. fans in it. Now, a national title game, little yeah, different story. Yeah, but of course. Yeah, the Super Bowl's back there in a couple years now. Little different, but yeah, it yeah. May make it one of the premier. Yeah, yeah I, I, I kind of agree with your play. Yeah, so that's under. All right, Bear, I think we did it. We, we shamed we you into making it. the best bet. Shame me into making a best bet. You have, have a new sponsor. I made myself hungry for Pop Tarts. <laughs> gonna have to get one now before I before I leave the hope to find a little bodega, right? Right. There's um, one like two blocks away, yeah. Is there? Yeah. Before before I get in the car and go back up there. But yeah, that would, we, we we got more ground covered than I thought we would in that gambling group show. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was gonna be a, a big week, but we got we got the Montana play from the uh Montana. Yeah, I like that, from, yeah. We, we, and I like I like that as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I did find my, I did find Montana plus one and a half early, and I, I did grab that. Um, so hopefully that will uh, that will get there. Hopefully the Jackrabbits will get to that 
FCS title game, and we got we got the them to win the title there for a couple weeks ago. Yeah. We got we got some some good CLV we can throw in the dumpster with West Virginia <laughs> from uh, from a couple of weeks ago. I'm looking forward to losing that bet. Hey, there we go. We're in the, we're in the giving spirit. So yeah. that was a uh, that was fun. We got a couple more in the, in the uh, football season, college football season, before we uh, just focus on the NFL and whatever we uh, focus on in the off season with the NCAA tournament, some golf majors, first race, some triple crown, baseball preview. And we still got plenty of stuff to uh, talk about. So that'll be uh, that's it for another edition. Big noon kickoff presents Bear Bets. We've, uh, we've completed bowl week one. So for Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, appreciate you all for listening, downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, wherever you uh, consume your podcast material. Check us out on YouTube as well. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. Hard for this podcast. Hey. Mm-hmm.